Hey, so I'm Emily Lutzker, and uh, besides being part of Aging 2.0, I also run an innovation company called OpenInvo. And it's OpenInvo's mission to be a bridge between the right-brainers and the left-brainers of the world. And one great thing that right-brainers do is we do context very well. And so I'm going to be here tonight telling you uh, about this uh, baby boomer market uh, and to contextualize them a little bit in culture. So you can tweet at me, by the way, uh, at Lutzker. I'll, I'll tweet back later. <laughs> So uh, what's, what's been happening is that the boomers uh, just last year started turning 65, which is, is retirement for everyone. If you don't know the, the stats in, in this market about how many of them there, there are, there, there were 77 million births during this period of time, you know, less than 20 years. Now 26% of the U.S. population, which is huge. So they're not, you know, this aging market that we're talking about anymore. They are the market. And these people that are, you know, 50 to, to 65, that are late 40s to, to 65, they have all of the buying power in the, in the country. And they're, they're cool, they're hip. You know, some of us, we're, we're cool, we're, we're hip, or, or, or getting there. And this is what they're, they're spending their, their money on. They control over 80% of personal financial assets in the country. I mean, these aren't small stats. Uh, they're, they're pretty significant for 26% of the population to control that percent of the, of the wealth. Um, they're, they're spending 50% of the, of the money uh, that's, that's out there. And they buy 77% of all prescription drugs. I guess they got into their drug usage kind of early. Uh, <laughs> and, and they're continuing that, you know, just in a more legal way. Um, and they spend 80% uh, uh, of the, the leisure travel money that's out there, they, they, they spend it. So the 55 plus cohort is responsible for over half of consumer spending in the next 20 years. I put some uh, uh, pictures that are, are just showing um, what was kind of happening during their, their formative years here because they've, they've changed a lot. Um, and what we need to do is to understand them a, a, a little bit better. Uh, they, they don't like to age. They, they want to stay forever young. I mean, who, who doesn't? But now, you know, aging is, is cool, so we need to make cool products for, for them. But, uh, but look at what they're spending in the anti-aging industry. Uh, by 2015, it's going to top $115 billion. And, um, and they're still going at it. They're resisting aging. They're resisting retirement. 25% of them say that they don't want to retire at all. I mean, who wants to retire when working at a fabulous place like Deutsch or, or anywhere else can, can be so much fun, but also, but also rewarding. And unlike uh, the generation before them that decided that they wanted to relax into retirement and sort of do nothing, and they were very excited for, for that part of their lives, this is the experience economy. They actually, they want to discover new things and they want to learn new things. And with their free time, they're, they're not stopping what they're, they're doing. They're just doing more. They're, they're doing more and they're, and they're spending more, which is a, a great opportunity for, for us. Um, and which explains why they don't want to go into those old style nursing homes and being, being taken care of, you know, and they don't want to move to Florida and Arizona like the generation before them. They actually prefer to age in place. So, uh, so we need to figure out what kind of technologies, what sort of uh, healthcare solutions, what sort of consumer products will appeal to this market. And they're not all the same. This is a, a common breakdown of, of two, uh, two sort of groups of the, the, boomer, the boomer market. And, uh, and having, having studied media and communications, I, I put up a couple of uh, uh, shots for, of films which were, came out or were popular or depict their formative years. So, uh, so basically, uh, you see The Graduate on top, which is the story of a 22-year-old coming of age in 1967. So this is the, the leading generation of baby boomers. And uh, have any of you seen The Graduate? Yes, yes. Have you, any of you not seen The Graduate? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> 
Anyway, uh, as, as all of you know at the, at the end there, you know, two, two 22 year olds who say, we're not going to do what our parents told us to do. You know, this is the definition of the generation gap. We're different than the generation before us. We're actually, I'm not going to marry that guy I was supposed to marry, and I'm not going to go into plastics like I was supposed to, and we're going to run away at the church, you know, block the door with the cross, and get on that school bus, you know, which is dusty with no money in our pocket, and go off off into the wild and, and explore, explore life. So this, this part of the baby boomers, they wanted to explore life in, in that way. The, the second part, half of the baby boomers, which is also known as Generation Jones, um, uh, this, the movie was made later, it's uh, from Days and Confused, but a friend of mine who graduated high school in 1976, which is when the, the movie takes place, she says, it was just like that. My high school was just like that. That they were, they they obviously, you know, even from the the picture there, um, they had grown up with the sexual revolution. They knew that uh, that that was that was something that they could embrace. That their lives they could embrace it in a in a different way, certainly than their than their parents had and the generations before them. So for me, as I was starting this this research with Aging 2.0. Uh, a couple of things happened uh, uh, that were brought to my attention, and one of them is how this generation identifies themselves with the music of their formative years so so strongly. And uh, they were the first generation to grow up with rock and roll, with television, and I think that they identify with uh, music so strongly because of television, because of the visual images they had of the rock stars that, that were around. You know, they were, they were kids when the, when the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan. They, they saw them, they, you know, they, they saw Elvis Presley and his gyrating hips, you know, in a, in a different way than the generations before. So they, they had an emotional response to it. This is an ad, and I, I'm not gonna spend time, time playing us, but that uh, Blue Cross Blue Shields, Anthem Blue Cross did, uh, that is very recent, and they tapped into this emotional response that the boomers have. Uh, basically, uh, grandparents sitting upstairs, they're hearing a band playing, and, um, and they, they say, you know, oh, that's horrible, that noise, all of that, you know, let's go downstairs and help, you know, our, our grandchildren. So they get there, of course, it's the granddaughters, which is even, even better, and grandpa, you know, takes the, the electric guitar and says, let me show you how it's done, and, you know, plays Born to be Wild, which, you know, came out probably in his high school years, and, uh, and the ad says, you're more rocker than rocking chair, you know, which to me was very poignant about the, the identity of, of, this, of this group. Um, so, so I tried to break it down a little bit and, and looking at the silent generation, the generation that came before it, and, uh, and what the music was that was influencing them, you know, which was Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra and, and Lawrence Welk and the Marvelettes. Uh, in, in there, and, and that they weren't driven in the same way. But then I, I did a little math. And, uh, and if you were born in 1945, uh, and you were 18 in 1963, that's the, that's the math there. So what was happening? We had Jimi Hendrix was, uh, was coming out, also the Rolling Stones. You were mid-stage Beatles. Already the Beatles were, were not new. They were hippies and they were, they were already, you know, uh, uh, doing the flower power thing and, and wearing bell bottoms and, and everything like that. And later on, um, even as the, the, the newer boomers grew up, I matched them up with Led Zeppelin, with Linda Ronstadt, and with ABBA. Now, you don't really think of your grandparents listening to ABBA, do you? Of thinking that that's the, that's the kind of um, emotional response they, they might have, you know, when you're, you're talking to your grandparent. You think that they're, they're going to be uh, wearing a house coat, you know, buying a travel alarm clock, you know, all kinds of, of, of different little things that they, would, that they wanted in their lives. But now, you know, this generation that listened to ABBA, that identified with Blondie and John and Yoko, you know, and their, their naked pictures in, in bed and, and all of this, um, that they want something else. And we can really use that kind of identification through music to, to speak to this, this group in a, in a way that I think hasn't been done before. 
So I'll talk about the, the next trend uh, that, that we see, which is design for all. And uh, the, the, the big uh, bo famous boomer who's recently passed away, do I need to mention his name, uh, who actually was, uh, was the icon for, exactly, hold up that, that little device there, Jeff, was the icon, you know, doing, doing design for, for all, who watched children uh, play with computers. And he knew, Steve Jobs knew, that what a kid wants to play with, of course, what an older person also wants to play with and, and wants to use, that that was good user experience. Um, and a regular adult, whatever those people are, since, uh, since they're now, now boomers too, um, they could use that thing too, and if you design well and you design for everyone across the board, that product, it makes no difference and it's, it's not speaking down to that sort of regular adult, to that agile adult or, or whatever we want to we wanna call them now. So this emerging trend, design for all, OXO did it extremely well with their good grips line that, that came out. Uh, not only just designed for, for people with arthritis, for kids with little hands, but also, you know, for anyone to use and do a better job in the kitchen. So the idea is to make well-designed products for everyone for this market. Um, and I'll continue this uh, design for, for all. Uh, in thinking about the language that we have to use, and hopefully, Cheryl, I don't know if you'll, you'll touch on this a little bit later, they don't like to be age marketed to. You know, uh, don't, don't call me senior, older, adult, older adult. Um, certainly, don't call me young lady was actually a direct quote uh, from, from one of the uh, uh, retirees that, uh, that we had interviewed in, in Florida, how it's, it's patronizing. And certainly, you don't think that any of these ladies, you know, should be referred to in that way. And, and they, don't, they don't speak about themselves in that way. Actually, they're, they're sexy. Over 50 is sexy now, and they're having sex, <laughs> and they're having a lot of sex. The, there's this, this uh, um, organization called Safer Sex for Seniors that did one of the, the raciest, fabulous YouTube ads that it, that's out there, you know, which is with all of these, these seniors kind of in, the, in these sexual poses, um, uh, and, and to... to House music, it's, it's great if you, if you have a chance to, to go look at their, their website. And, and talking about how uh, the seniors in, in Florida, the rate of STDs is, is rising among them. You know, they, they have Viagra, they're living it up. You know, they're, 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 they're just above, you know, we don't want to think about our, our parents doing it, but you know, they're all, they're all doing it. So anyway, uh, and they're all getting plastic surgery because they all still want to look good. You know, they're, they're, it's the me generation and they're spending money on them themselves because they want to look good and they want to feel good and they want to know things. There was uh, a book that came out a while ago uh, called Balsamic Dreams, which was kind of a parody of the, the baby boomer generation. I don't know if any of you n know it. Uh, but uh, you know, which which really the the name itself kind of epitomizes the the generation, how you know they they brought in you know not just the sexual revolution and uh, civil rights um, movement, uh, but also you know they wanted to experience things. They wanted to experience balsamic vinegar, you know, which was a a, a fancy imported uh, specialized item. They want to feel special. I, who doesn't want to feel special? And they taught us all that. So some, some trends we can see in terms of new business models that are, that are emerging, um, they're no different than what everybody else is doing. The, we see the peer-to-peer -peer models are, are very strong. Even in the silent generation seniors right now, they're teaching each other things and they're learning things. They want to, they want to continue learning. Uh, there's a, a group that sort of started across the United States called the Institute for Learning and Retirement. And they're teaching each other stuff every day in, in classes. But they're also getting on Skillshare and they want to share stuff with each other. They're, they're using Zipcar. We, we think it's for us 20 year olds, you know, us 20 year olds, those 20 year olds, who uh, <laughs> I keep forgetting. How old am I anyway? Um, <laughs> 
the, who, uh, who don't have cars, but it's for everyone. You know, you can share things, and especially if on, you're on a fixed income, who wants to clip coupons anymore? You can actually just go to Groupon and you can show it on your smartphone. They, are, they all have smartphones. Hopefully, Jeff, I don't know if you have some statistics later about the, the use of, of technology, but, um, uh, you know, I know, I'm sorry, my, my, my parents in their 70s, they're, they're on Facebook, and, uh, and most of the boomers are getting on Facebook, especially to watch their children and see what they're, they're doing. They want to use technology to connect with their, with their families. They want to use the technology to have experiences in the, in the world. So, um, so besides that, some of the things that we'll, seeing, we'll be seeing are um, new lifestyle communities rather than uh, uh, nursing homes. Uh, the boom communities, which are a, a lesbian, gay, new type of community, high designed, uh, where people can go and when they retire and have a good time and connect with people that have um, that want to experience the world in the same way that they that they have, and they're also looking to the future. I, this was one statistics that I that I read was that um, uh, sorry <laughs> was that most of the hybrid car buyers are above 50 in in age groups. So th so they all want to they care about the environment and they want to preserve the environment for the future generations. So a couple, of, a couple of things that may be emerging in the future. Uh, I don't know if anyone of you saw the, the ad campaign and the collection that Iris Apfel did for Mac. Uh, it's a, a not for the older generation. She is now calling herself a geriatric starlet. Uh, and she is, uh, uh, she is a big advocate of how uh, attitudes can change uh, towards older, older people. It's a uh, really, really nice line, and, and nobody considers her that she's not fashionable. She is with it. That uh, just look at her glasses, and uh, and something else. Speaking of ageism, which is going to be on the decline. Um, uh, I'm a sucker for anything with lots of CGI effects, and especially if there's a space alien and the world's going to blow up. So I went to go see the movie Battleship, and of course. The, the world it was about to be destroyed, but uh, and our our young heroes that that look great that know all the coolest technology they're about to save the day. But oh no, maybe they can't do it, and they're at the the end. And here's the climax of the movie. And what can we use to fight against this this horrible threat from from outer space? Oh look, there's this old navy ship, and there's some old guys on it which is a really good thing because the young guys don't know how to run this ship. So they swoop in and they say, you know, hey, hey, grandpa, you know, can you come in and help us fight these aliens from outer space? And they say, for sure we can. So they come in, save the day, and, um, uh, and the, the, the world goes on, you know, for, forever, of course. But what was so nice about it was really to, to see this older generation that knew about the analog technology teaching the younger generation um, about things that they had learned and created in their, their strategies. So I started talking to some people uh, in the military about how they view the older generation. And I found out that it's actually illegal to, uh, to disrespect your senior officers. So using that as an example, you know, not the, the, the military, you know, with our, our, um, uh, our soldiers returning from Afghanistan and IRIS, you know, uh, what, I, what I see for the next five years is really some uh, decline in ageism and how those kinds of attitudes, like what we're talking about here, I mean, obviously getting all these people in this room together, will change how we look at, uh, um, at aging in, in general. So anyway, thanks very much. Um, and if you want to talk to me some more, uh, we're all living till 100 these days, so we have time. <laughs>